going to start showing uh, the work that uh, represent me on this exhibition. And then I'm going to show the new work that I've been made uh, in the Schwarzwald, no, in the Black Forest. And at uh, the end, I can show you a little of my processes, no? the process of, of the paintings and the work that I'm doing. In any time you can ask some question, in any time you can, you can suggest something because it's about to talk, we all not me to talk alone, okay? Okay? <laughs> okay, so, um, to start, is there, some, is there some question? Mm -hmm. I don't hear anyone. Okay, so, um, uh, should I keep uh, doing that in English, or do you want to change German? <laughs> oh, well, for me, English would be nice, but yes, for me but, too. Okay, for me too. Okay, it's it's. We said that we are going to do it in English, so we are going to do it in English. Yeah, and if, if someone uh, yeah, English is English is fine with me. Okay, wenn jemand nicht etwas nicht versteht, ist kein Kurs auf Deutsch auch äh, erzählen, ja? Aber theoretisch, wir müssen das alles auf Englisch machen, ja? So, yes, yes, auf yes, yes. Englisch. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to start to show you first the work that I'm presenting in, in this exhibition uh, that is already in the website. So, I will put this here. Uh, this here, and I will put here. Let me see. Okay. So I will I will check if there is not light because it's a little bit dark. Yes. Yes, there is. <coughs> So the title of this work is the poet's rifle is a rose, and it was made in 2019, beginning of 2019. And uh, the technique is acrylic on panel. Um, well, and I was inspired uh, uh, in the war, yeah, and I was inspired also in some personal issues. And most of them, uh, the re remembrance of war that I have in my country when I lived in, in, in Peru. So when I lived in Peru, we, I had a, we had a time of terrorism and uh, I was a kid back then. So I used to go to school and come back home and uh, try to stay at home because it was uh, sometimes a little bit dangerous to be outside. In at that time, there was a, some movement called the Shining Path, in English will be Shining Path. It was a terrorist movement uh, with Maoist, Maoist uh, beliefs, and they wanted to change the, the society. They wanted to, well, the, what they wanted was uh, good at the beginning. No? They wanted to eliminate injustice between the rich and the poor, and they wanted to bring the poor back in power and they want to give the poor more resources. No? This terrorist group, this shining path. That was the beginning, but you know, uh, that was not the right way to do it. So uh, they started a really cruel war. And this war lasted 10 years, terrorism in my country. It was from 80 to 92, about 92. Uh, so that means, all my time in school, I was living in, in this terrorist, terrorist time. Yeah? At the beginning, was not in, uh, in the city where I was living, the, the capital, Lima. At the beginning, it was in the mountains, but, but uh, after some years, the terrorists came to the city and started to do yeah, uh, many things in the city, you know? like bombing buildings, like bombing cars, like uh, killing people. And uh, this is why when I came to Europe and 
this uh, flushing uh, this refugee uh, theme started, I could uh, empathize with the suffering of these people because I was also remembering the, the time when the, there was terrorism in my country. Now I need to say that now my country on Latin America is almost no without uh, war, without terrorism, but there is so many things still to do, but at least we don't have any kind of war or terrorism in my country. No, I would love to hear some questions. And you can unmute your, your phone. Um, uh, I ask in, in German and uh, <laughs> you answer in English, okay? Okay. <lacht> ähm, wie lange bist du hier? Vielleicht für die alle, die nicht wissen, äh, kannst du vielleicht erzählen äh, äh, und äh, dein, ein bisschen deine Werdegang. Wie bist du hierher gekommen? Vielleicht ein bisschen. Ja, yeah. um, I've been here almost seven years. Almost seven years. I came in July 2013. Oh, and uh, it's almost seven years. I came here uh, direct to Frankfurt because I was married in Frankfurt. And I, after one year living in, in Frankfurt, I became a widow. So that was traumatic all my time alone in, in Germany. You know? This is a little bit of my story. And uh, well, uh, in this time I needed to knew many people and to start my life again. And it was easier to coming here uh, knowing that uh, I was belonging to some family, but uh, after one year that was not the case anymore. So I, I was alone in Germany you know, at the beginning and all these years. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I need all the question. Didn't it uh, uh, influence your way of, of, of looking at people and, and uh, uh, believing in the, the, the good side of people when you grow up in a war? Uh, yeah, all, all those years, they're, they're so forming uh, for you when you are at school. Mm. Well, I think the people that is living in a country with violence, they tend to divide what is happening like outside in the daily life. I think, I think it's different when people are living, uh, like for example, the people in Syria, uh, the, actually the war came to their towns and to their cities, no? so they were uh, directly involved. But for us, it was like having a difficult times, but trying to thrive through these difficult times. I think this is one of the characteristics of the people in my country, in my generation, that we are uh, fighters. No, we don't. We don't get uh, scared so easily. <laughs> uh, at least I think that way. No, for, for example, with this theme of this uh, sickness of this epidemic, as they called it, uh, I'm not so scared, and I was not so scared. I try to ignore it. I try to do my stuff. You know, and I think that sometimes that is the best approach. And. Uh, well, uh, as a kid, I lived uh, many difficult things now that I remember. For example, there, there was a time, there was not only this terrorism, also we had a bad president, a really bad president back then, from uh, 85 to 90, and we have this hyperinflation, hyper this phenomena called hyperinflation, where the thing costed more and more and more and more, and it was crazy. You know, living in that time was crazy. In one side, kind of terrorists, and they bought the towers, the electric towers, so we don't, we have no light. On the other side, the president made a mistake, and came the hyperinflation, and we have no money. <laughs> so came came one day when I needed to 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 celebrate my birthday, and we had no cake. You know, I remember that clearly. But even, even so, even it was a difficult time, I think having the love of the family, the love of the friends is really a good thing to live. So I think that answers your question. This is a concept called resilience. Resilience is a concept in psychology 
when people that are pushed in uh, difficulties find inner strength to overcome these difficulties. Good. Uh, I will I will explain a little bit formally what's happened here. No, because the, the the title of my work is the title of this work. No, the title of this of this meeting is the title of this work. So I will explain a little bit what's happened here. So as you can see, I made a soldier here and I made and made a victim here, and uh, I made some stairs and some. I try to keep the, the colors just simple with just two or three colors. No, so I'm using green. I'm using red, a little bit of red and pink, and I'm using yellow. Oh, this is a really unusual uh, uh, combination of colors for me, I think. No, and also black. No, black, brown. No, this is the palette that I choose. And the idea came spontaneously. I started one figure, I started the other figure, and then the background came uh, at the end. No, and the texture, and it's just. Uh, uh, what is called acrylic painting for this uh, work. I use acrylic painting. There is no no oil here. It's just acrylic. And uh, well, uh, I make that. This is a really interesting detail. No, that I that I made. I made a tear on this man. And as a, um, as I explained in my in the website. No, in the website from from. When my work is 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 uh, being exhibited, uh, I was having at that time when I made this painting, I was like feeling myself like a soldier, uh, going to kill someone, you no? Know? Because I needed to make a difficult decision, and uh, well, I would say I needed to end a relationship, and it was not easy for me, and uh, well, and it cost me a lot, of course, to do that. And that is the story, you know? and that those are the materials and uh, the colors that I used you know, for this work. Uh, I will answer some more questions about this topic and about this painting, and then I can show you the new small formats that I've been doing for, uh, from the Black Forest, okay? So I will check who else is online. Dennis is walking. Yeah. I have a question. I have a question. You have your training was in Peru, not in Germany. Yeah. And we don't know how to do it with the Peru in Germany, as we know it here in Germany. You have a certain teacher and you have your own eigene style entwickelt. How far is your own style influenced by your education or from the traditional Malerei in Peru? Can you tell us something about that? That is an interesting question. It's interesting. Um, I would say that, uh, well, the colors in my country are really exuberant. No? Uh, we use a lot of color in my country. So I could say this is something that I have in common from the uh, the learning that I have from the art school. No? I studied in an art school in Lima and it's called Edith Sachs Visual Arts. And it's an art school focused on visual arts, all kinds of visual arts, electronic arts, sculpture, uh, performance, and painting. Uh, well, if you see the painting in Peru, we have some some uh, tendence, tendencies like, uh, for example, indigenism. No, is one of them. But uh, I would say that when I came to in Europe, I would say Europe, not just Germany, but Europe. I was surprised of, of the lack of colors in the paintings. When I visit some galleries, when I was checking some art here in, in, in Frankfurt or in, in Germany. I found that the painting in, in Europe is a little bit more focused in one palette. It's not using all the colors at once, it's just trying to use, for example, browns, or trying to use, for example, sepias, and not always, but it's, it's a big tendency that I, I found in, in the art here in Europe. 
and um, Entschuldigung, well, Arturo. Uh, nur damit alle Member kommen, wer reingekommen ist, bitte Ton ausschalten, weil dann kommt Störung, wenn man das nicht redet uh, von der Umgebung, bitte. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that if someone is not speaking, need to put the microphone on mute, so there is no noise. Okay, so uh, this is something that I, that I carry from my country, I think, the use of calls. Uh, we have, for example, in the mountains, the, the Indians, as they call Indians, or people from the Indians, the Andes, they have wonderful calls. They have wonderful calls, and this lady, these ladies from the mountains, they use this rock from this uh, dress, full with rosas, purples, Hell blows. No? So it's a wonderful combination. Sometimes I need to to learn from them. In the other side, at the beginning I was just shouting with color, and I needed to quiet myself and to try to choose a, a palette. No, that is passed more with the theme that I wanted to do. I think I reached it with this one because my tendency is to put more, 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 more colors, and then quiet them with more layers of color, but in this case it was really clear that I wanted to do something in greens, in ochres, and in, in blacks. You know? uh, what I'm not so, uh, that I needed to learn by myself, not with my uh, teachings in my country, is the realism. And I'm fighting, still fighting with realism. Um, I mean, in my school, in my art school at least, it was really precious for the teachers that I, that someone can paint or draw realistically and can, for example, make a portrait like the original or that can make a hand with all the, sh the shades and all the colors. And, uh, well, oof, I think when I came here, I was more aware that this is not always uh, so important. So sometimes being too realistic uh, take me a lot of time, you know? so it's uh, an intentional effort to quiet my mind and to let, let, let go my, my ideas and not to try to, to do the things so realistically. In some cases I need to do it, for example if I'm working with a human figure, for example uh, you can see here I have a couple of words, all that is here is in process, not Nothing is finished here uh, that you that you are seeing. No? Just this one is finished. All the things that you see here is in process. So, for example, here I have a couple of words that uh, need to be realistic because I I try to uh, the theme of these couple of paintings it was the human figure. So these paintings take me more time. I need to need to think a lot about the comments. But uh, ideally, I want to do things like this when the idea is more important than the, how realistic it, the, the piece is, no? Okay, so uh, do you have another question? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say uh, I will show you now the small formats that I've been doing. I would love to hear from you something, yeah? for example, <laughs> uh, even in German. Yeah? Uh, if you have some questions, just do it quietly. I will, I will change the painting. So, let's come here. No, the others are small formats, and I don't have any file, I don't have any digital file. I wanted to do everything live, real, so you can see uh, the work, the, the, the piece of the objects, and not just a digital file. Because if you want some digital file, you can go to my website, and you will find all the digital information that you need. So I will start with this one. No. I'm going to see by myself, or maybe you can sit closer. So it's only dark, isn't it? Maybe I can bring this here. 
and now you see bad side of it. So I will put this here, mm -hmm. and I will show you. So, okay, okay, so, 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 the neue Heimat. My neue Heimat, yeah, <laughs> uh, This uh, small format is part of the, uh, on the Black Forest. So I try to do some, some expressionist painting with oil and uh, it's based on the Black Forest, most of them. Some of them not, but most of them are inspired in, in the Black Forest. I have this format a long time ago. I had this big uh, panel and I set it cut to cut. So I had it a long time and I wanted to do something with them. And I started to work on this uh, small formats. So as you can see, it's a format, so Malplatte, uh, as they said in German, or panel, no? Uh, we said in, in English. And uh, this is oil painting with a layer of uh, acrylic painting uh, at, at the beginning. No? So this is called Kavis in Reichenthal, no? Hütte in Reichenbach. Hütte in Reichenbach is the name. Oh, no, in Reichenbach is a place really close from here that is really beautiful. And they have a Kunstwerk uh, that I want to be part of someday soon. So, uh, Arthur, Arthur is in plein air? No, I took the, pho the photo and I painted later. It's okay. not plein air. No, I mean, I have the photo gemacht and then in atelier have I have it. First time, I have it first time. And, um, well, this is the next one. Um, this is inspired in the Middle Age market. In the, well, actually, the, the city. I will, I will put myself here so we can speak in. Uh -huh. So you're seeing it, eh? Yeah. Come on, near to camera. This build, please. Uh huh. Thank okay. you. Okay. So. Besser so. Thank you. Genau, ich kann ein bisschen hoch. No, ich kann nicht mehr hoch. Okay, uh, this, is, this painting is called uh, Medieval Market. And actually, every year here my, in this city where I'm living now, uh, the city is called Gensbach. And every year we have a medieval market. And uh, the last year was the medieval market plus the Jubiläum uh, eight, 800 years. 800 Jahre, no? Jubiläum. So last year was both of them, no? Medieval market plus Jubiläum 800 Jahre, no? 800 years. So I found that really, really interesting and I was really, really amazed by this old street because this city has 800 years and uh, I painted it. Yeah? So in this case, I, de I decided to use yellows, rosas, and uh, occurs huh, to build the painting. You have some question about this painting? Yeah, ich wieder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> schön, schön. It's on the web. It's on the web. Yeah, genau. For dich, is das eine deutsche Malerei or a peruanische Malerei? Ich glaube, ich, I would say it's more expressionistic painting. I don't, I don't see this kind of painting in my country so, so, so easily, yeah, uh, because of the, of the theme, no, because the theme is uh, European, no, 100% uh, European, and I don't think my, this painting is reflecting the way to paint of my country. No, uh, I have other paintings, but we are going to go there, because I want to show you many things, no? So, now, I will need to remember the title of this painting, and I will try to put some nice light on it. Uh, I will try to put some light on it. Okay. Oops. Yep. Yeah. Okay. As you can see, this is the painting. It's cool. Um, I will print here. Uh huh. Is it easy? Oh no, this is painting is Lauten, Lauten, Lautenbach, Lautenbach, Wasserfall, Lautenbach, Wasserfall, no? 
Lautenbach waterfalls. And uh, oh, it's also inspired in a, another place close to here that is called uh, Lauten, Lautenbach. And uh, well, I was also visiting the place in a, in a excursion and I took the picture and after that then I saw the picture that I wanted and I made this painting. And this painting is also with a first layer of acrylic and then it's worked with oil painting. Do you have some question about this? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at your uh, website uh, as well, then I can see the, the colors uh, a bit more. But it's, it's really uh, uh, amazing how you work with the, the colors and in relation with what you told us uh, uh, before, uh -huh. uh, that you, you had to, to you, were, you, you were educated with all those uh, colors and you had to tone them uh, down. But I think it's really brilliant how you how do, do it with uh, the waterfall and also in the, the, the marketplace uh, picture. Or you just put in those those vibrant colors, but they, they are very much in tone. I, I think it's really great uh, how you do it. Thank you. That's just, that's just really nice to say to hear. Well, I uh, as I said at the beginning, I was shouting with color. Then I was uh, cutting down the colors, and I think now I'm more in tone with uh, with being colorful without shouting too much. You know, I think, or well, this is what I want to do. Uh, anyway, for example, this combination here of reds and greens and whites interested me a lot. And it's not part of the original painting, it's like interpretation of, of, of the place. And this is just uh, some landscapes that I wanted to, to paint uh, because, because I was like happy to be in, in a new place, in a new forest. Other part of my story that I haven't uh, speak now that I lived seven years in Amazon rainforest. So I will put myself here so I can speak and show the paintings at the same time. Um, well, I was living in Amazon rainforest from 2006 until 2012. I was having, I was director and founder of a, a lodge, a jungle lodge, and also uh, in Germany we will say a Verein, Kulturverein. It will be a, a cultural association. I have both of them. And uh, uh, my partner was German. And uh, this is how I come in Germany, in, in uh, I, how I came to Germany at, at, at the end of this story. But the story is that I was living in, in Amazon rainforest and I was amazed by the colors and I was amazed by the nature. I was amazed by the uh, life forms that li are living there. And uh, I, w I worked there uh, until 2012 because we have a flood and uh, all our uh, houses and all our infrastructure collapsed and we needed a lot, a lot of effort and money to rebuild it. So we decided to, to stop this project and that is how I came to Europe. And uh, that is why I, when I came back to the forest, in this forest, black forest, I was really happy and we really, really enjoying the opportunity to be uh, again in a forest. And that is why I started this micro series and I started to work on these uh, themes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Arturo, würdest du mich erlauben, äh, deine Bilder äh, über meine Bildschirm äh, zu übertragen? Weil man hat einen ganz anderen äh, Eindruck, wenn man so kleine sieht. Mm -hmm. Ich kann äh, über meine Bildschirm das übergeben. Guck mal, ich habe das von deiner Webseite, uh -huh. weil, weil yeah, da kann man die, die Malerart mehr, mehr ahnen, genau. weil es ist, man kann nicht die Malerart sehen durch uh -huh. diese kleine. Genau, genau. Ich finde interessant, das zu sehen auch, dass. Äh, genau. Oh, that painting, I mean, that painting is in the other room. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, you can you can check it on the, on the website. The website is also uh, all the paintings are prepared, all the paintings are optimized to the right size, to the right uh, resolution. And I'm working a lot on the website, a lot. Sometimes I'm working too much on the website. 
Okay, I will show you now this one. Okay, this is, that's fast. This is from the same time. This is from the same time, but it's not uh, in, from Europe. This is from my country. This is Santa Maria Beach. Uh, I went there in January, and uh, this is the place that I choose to to paint when as a, as a remembrance of my travel to Peru. And I, it was the first time that I came back to my country in seven years, in almost seven years. So it was really uh, nice to be there. So this is also an oil on, on canvas. It's a small format. And uh, this is complete canvas. Hmm? So I will show you the other of this series. And after I show you these paintings, I will show you some processes. Okay, this is this is the Glacier Express that I made. And it was talking and thinking about uh, landscape in this series. It was not about people, it was not about stories, it was much more about landscapes. So I choose this landscape from a place that I went uh, last year, that it was uh, in uh, Switzerland. And uh, it's uh, near from Tirano, is the and I call this painting Glacier Express because I was traveling in this train, this Glacier Express train. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, after that, I will show you. Uh, well, I have one more. Let me see. Oh yes, this one. I paint. I always say that I, pick, I make my paintings with sisters and brothers. I mean, for example, this painting from this, this, this couple of paintings, they are brothers or sisters, as you want to call them, yeah? Because I made them at the same time. And I'm using sometimes the same colors of the same technique. And in this case, this is called uh, Girl in Love. And it's, this, it's, so, it's really funny because if we think about conceptual art, or we think how we describe our artwork, I will say, why did you choose to do this? No? And when you can find a, a reason to do something, but in this case, it's just the canvas had spots, red spots, the canvas, for a previous painting. So I couldn't wash it away. And when I saw these red spots, they looked like, uh, flowers to me. So I started to do the flowers and they, the flowers were flying like flying. So I make some wings that also are leaves and then say, well, this is a love story. I will put a girl here. And this is called a uh, girl in love, no? That's what we mentioned, no? As we say in German. Um, I think that is all of the paintings of this, of this, uh, Series. I have one more that is on my website, but it's in the other room. So I will show you, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. some of the processes. If you have some questions, that would be nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Can you show us the one uh, at at the right of you, the one which looks like the desert and the nice sky, and tell us something about that? This. Yes, this, this one. one. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, so we're starting some uh, uh, works, works in process, okay? So this is a wonderful one. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. This is some, it's taking some time. This is inspired, I will put my camera a little bit. Uh huh, can you see it? Uh, well, a moment. Mm -hmm. Even too big. A moment. Okay, let me see. Uh, I will center it. Yeah. Okay, this is another painting that I'm working, and I'm reworking it because at the beginning it was really jello, and uh, I started it, uh, but it was not ending like I wanted, so I changed some things, and now it's more for me, it's more interesting. So what I'm doing now, I, I changed the color of the sky. The sky was yellow at the beginning. Mm. Oh, it was yellow, yellow, yellow. It was too yellow, it was a little bit boring for me. And uh, 
I was like, what am I going to do with this painting? <laughs> and then I decided to put some blue and purple to change the sun. And I realized that I made a mistake in the illumination of the painting because here was the sun. If, the, if here is the sun, there cannot be shadows here. Do you understand what, what is the, the mm -hmm. mistake was? So here was a really bright sun and the shadows was pointing mm -hmm. the other way. So I said, oh, that is the problem. The painting is not looking uh, correct because, because of the illumination. So I decided to change the sky. And uh, this is part of the original idea, but I am re reworking them because uh, I will put the camera a little bit closer so you can see, because now I'm reworking the ships. No? Ah, these are ships on the sand. Is it a sand or is it a desert? It's sand. It's sand, but this is, uh, uh, this, this painting is inspired in two memories of my life. Uh, th there is a uh, beach in, in, in Peru that is, is called Athens, Atenas. It's oh, called yeah. Atenas. And they have these ships on sand. Mm -hmm. These destroyed uh, wrecked ships, as they call it. Wrecked ships. And uh, this idea, it is really romantic because you can make wonderful photos. And I went there once and I was really amazed by these uh, boats, no? There's the small boats. So in this painting, I decided to put these small boats, wrecked the small boats there. But at the beginning, mm, as you can see on the purple or blue, in this case, um, painting, uh, they didn't, didn't, I didn't like it. So I'm, I'm changing it, as you can see, with pencil, on white and um, black pencil, I'm changing them, and I'm changing it in something that I think that is more appropriate for the painting, you know? In this case, for example, this is a, a ship. This is a real, a real ship. And another thing that I'm doing here, but you cannot see, I'm putting a pyramid. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can see that here, oh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm putting some pyramids, pre-Hispanic pre pyramids, on this landscape, you know, on this side. And it's going to be on these, I don't think they are all of them, but you can see here, I started another pyramid. So, uh, in that sense, I think the painting is going to be more interesting now, for me, because they have this component of this, uh, the boats, and now it has the uh, pyramids in the background. So I will show you now another thing. I will show you a painting that I started uh, before I came to, to Germany and that I br brought back with me in my, in my uh, back when I came back to Germany. And this is a process also, no? Nothing that is here is finished. It's all of them are processes. So, and this is a, I, I think I, I would see this painting really inspired in the... Uh, uh, I wish I'm a bit more to you, Dre, because the light is reflected too much, we can't see it, it blends a bit. A ver, let me look. So is good, so is better. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But it's a bit too high, a bit down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can see. It's, it's, a still, it's a still in work. It's still in process, but I use a, a layer of plaster, as you can see. Well, let me see my camera so I can show you uh -huh, what I'm doing. Maybe I need to put in another position. Yes. For example, I started with a layer of plaster, a really thick layer of plaster all around the painting. And uh, at this moment it's with all acrylic painting. As you can see here, for example, you can see the texture of the painting. It's really, really full with texture, but I need to repair it. So I repair it and I'm, it's now in a new uh, frame, in a new Kyle Raman. And now I'm going to start to paint it with oil paintings. In this case, this is one of them. And this is, this is the brother, this is the sister painting of this one. That I'm showing you now. And I would. 
-huh. And that is also a process. And this idea, I love this idea. As you can see, it's just something that is ignoring a big disaster. <laughs> Is someone that is ignoring a big disaster, no? At the back because it's it's uh, complete uh, distracted with the cell phone. Okay. So do you have some question? Ich auf jeden Fall. Ja. Wie kommst du zu deinen Motiven? Die ko die Motive kommen zu dir oder du wählst äh, ganz äh, bewusst damit du bestimmte Sachen verkaufst oder du denkst, in welche Kategorie denkst du, damit du mm. sage, das möchte ich malen, das möchte ich nicht malen oder das möchte ich in drei Monaten malen und jetzt möchte ich das malen. Was ist, mm. wie, wie sortierst du das? So, uh, I would say that most of the time I'm thinking about uh, ideas in, in, in groups, no? in group ideas. For example, in this case of this couple of uh, uh, human figures, I'm thinking I need to work on the human figure. So I'm going to do uh, many paintings with the theme human figure. And I need to, them to be 50% male and 50% female. Now this is one way to work on the series. In this case, for example, in the desert, this desert is part of the series of, of places in the world. So this is the idea. That this is a series of paintings that are inspired in, in uh, places in the world. This is also a little bit more rational. In other cases, it's more like uh, emotional. For example, I don't know if you can relate. And I repeat, I don't like to show my processes, but I will do it with you. But you can see this in this painting. Momento. Yeah, in this painting. That's, uh, um, there is uh, some tale. That is the milk, uh, the lady and the milk cane. I don't know if you know it. No, this is this lady. Go, is, go, and she bought some milk, and she thinks, oh, with this milk, I'm going to do business, and I'm going to sell my milk, and I'm going to buy a cow, and I'm going to sell the cow, and I'm going to buy five cows, and then I'm going to have a, a, a big house, and then I'm going to have a lot of money, and then the cane is broken, and she lose all the milk and all the dreams. <laughs> in this case, in this case, that's happened to me with the Jungle Lodge. No? So this painting was after the Jungle Lodge. And uh, when I started the Jungle Lodge, I thought, oh, I will do this and I will do this and uh, that will happen to me and that will happen to me. And then came the flood and took all my, my buildings away. And I felt with the, like this milk lady, you no? Know? So this, I don't know when I, I started this painting, but I started this painting and I thought, well, I feel like this milk lady. No? That's the same way that I think about the, the paintings on how I work on them. Um, in other cases, it's more rational and it's more, I need to sell something. No, that happens also. For me, at least, that I, and this is my hope, of not that I'm working as a painter, so I need to, to do profit with my, my, my work also. It's not just, oh, I'm going to work in something that, that nobody is going to care. So I need to be sure that the people is going to care. For example, you know, the people from Oil and Gas knows about me, my series, and my series is ongoing, and this is the uh, in process, no, it's still in the writing. This is the looks huh? of, 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 of Germany's looks. No? Um, and in English is links. No? This is the links. So I worked in a series of endangered uh, animals, and I have two objectives with this work. One of them is to provide the people awareness about the importance of uh, animal preservation. This is the first one. And the second one is importance to acquire them. No, the importance for me. No, to make money with them. Uh, I made a lot of prints with this series, and it's really successful, and uh, and I'm really happy that I had this idea. And this idea was not, okay, wait, I'm going to paint some something, or I'm going to paint my feelings. It was really rational, it was really down to the needs that I had to work on my mission, to 
uh, share my mission as an artist and also to make it profitable. No? That's just, I think that answered your question. Is there other question there? I would love to, I would love to answer all your questions. Caroline wollte was fragen, habe ich ja, sie? Ja, ja, die wollte was fragen, jetzt kommt sie gerade. Ja. Arturo? Ja. Um, uh, when we were visiting your, uh, your studio, we saw a, a painting with a wrestling scene. Ja. Yeah. Women wrestling, do you have this here? I sold it. <laughs> I saw that it's in USA now. The, the, the ladies, the fighting ladies. We thought this was a very in, energetic, with a lot of energy. Yeah. That's what we liked very much. Yes, I, 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 really, I really was uh, avoiding to finish it. And you said to me, it's, all, it's, all, it's already finished. You don't need to do anything more with this painting. And that is how I put it on my website. And a collector in USA found it and, and bought it. Wow, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, my, my, my head was, it's not finished. I need to do more. I need to do more. And that's well, the problem we think with you should sometimes. Go on with it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Just with this way, because there's much energy and much dynamic in it. Mm -hmm. it's like yes, yes. I will show you one of uh, right. a couple of paintings of this series. This is an ongoing series. No? I have finished pieces, like for example, the soldier. The soldier is a part of this series of fighters, of Kempa. No? This is the series of Kempa. And I'm working still, I, I think you, uh, yeah. you can tell me you saw this one. No? Yes, yes, I work a little more on this one. I don't know if you can see it completely. And uh, the idea is that I'm going to exhibit it, you know, if it's not so first. I'm going to exhibit uh, a series of, of fighters. That's the idea with this series, you no? Know? So this is one of them. And uh, I show you because you are going to see that uh, finish later and you are going to remember it. And uh, for example, I have this one. And sometimes the painting takes some things a lot of time to be finished. And this is the other one, oh, for example. And this um, middle size uh, format, oil paintings, and all of them are fighters. Mm -hmm. you know, as you can see, there is a lot of details, and I'm working a lot of details with these paintings. No? I will show you, for example, here. And of course, in video, you cannot see a lot. And this is something that I never, I never show to much people. And you are going to be the first to see this process is not finished, but this is this is a really funny one. Oh, let me see. Yes, yes. What do you see? <laughs> What do you see? Yes. Die Elke Berger ist gar nicht da. Es ist ein oh. Oktopus, ja. Genau. Oh. You fighting with octopus. Yeah. I'm fighting with a tintenfish. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought a long time ago, and someone said to me, this is really kitsch. <laughs> and I stop it. But I think I think I'm going to finish it, and this is going to be part of this fighter series. So I'm going to put this one here, and in this case, I'm going to show you this one. I'm not sure about to do with this one because uh, I could do it big or I could do it small. I will show you both both uh, versions. Okay, well, first the small version. So I. This is a. This is the idea. I found this. Uh, this is part of a, a photograph of Germany after the war. You know, as you can see, it's a family, and he's uh, he's walking, and, and the baby is really happy. You can see it. It's uh, springing. Yeah? So, and this family is walking, 
after the war ist nach dem Krieg, no? diese Familie läuft nach, nach dem Krieg und uh, du kann, man kann sehen alle die Ruinen im Hintergrund. Das ist noch im Prozess, das ist ein Prozess. And I was starting to work in this idea in this format. But after that, uh, I had the opportunity, or I thought I had the opportunity to exhibit a bigger painting of this, but I hadn't. So I worked it or anyway. And this is the it's upside down. But this will be clear, eh? Moment. Uh -huh. so this. No, and this is a big version. So I'm not sure if I'm going to finish maybe this small format, or maybe I'm going to finish this one in this big version. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that because I like the idea because it reflects uh, the strength of the country. I think no, or the or overall the strength of overcoming difficulties. No? As you can see, the same image is the uh, families walking uh, in all the ruins, no, the ruin, and it's the same idea. No? So I'm working on, on both of them now. And I will show you the painting to the background. We have five minutes. Oh, you are not being boring by me. <laughs> uh, wanted to, uh, talk you are about not being boring by me because I'm showing you everything. <laughs> So this is part of the human figure, wow. and this is the idea. Is to, I I'm there on the painting, you know? <laughs> As you can see, I'm there on the painting, and the idea is playing the the, the seduction game, to play the seduction game, you know? to be in a relationship and to play like she's a model and the man is the photograph, you know? the photographer. You know? So that is the idea in this painting. It's a still a process, it's not ready, it's, it's not uh, healthy, it's in process now. But that's the idea of this, this painting. Uh, well, what else can I show und, you? And that is your new inspiration from Schwarzwald, or? Aha, good question, good question. That is a good question. I started a series, I'm starting a series of these formats. This is 50 pro 70, 50 pro 60, you know? So that's in of the Schwarzwald, no? That's in of the Schwarzwald. I have this one, by which been angefangen, I started them, no? So this is one of them. This is going to be called a uh, floss party, floss party, mm -hmm. because they have this boat that's called the floss uh, boat, yeah? And they used to carry wood on them, no? Uh, holes, no? A horse trader uh, boat or so. Eh? Yeah. Uh, Hallo Arturo, ich, ich, müsste, ich müsste dich unterbrechen. Wir machen eine letzte Runde von Fragen, weil jetzt okay. äh, wir haben noch zwei Minuten äh, und ja. dann kommt der nächste ähm, äh, Vortrag äh, und nächste Meeting, nächste Tag ja. von Revet, okay? okay. Äh, jetzt ist die, äh, die Elke hat ja. jetzt eine Frage. Mm -hmm. Arturo, some yeah. days or some weeks ago you have posted in the Facebook a man who was snorkeling. It is was a, a, from an older series or a, from a new? And what was your inspiration for this picture? Oh, that was not a snorkeling. That was that was a, a tough decade. <laughs> Tough thinking, tough thinking. <laughs> I was thinking your man is snorkeling. No, it was not no. snorkeling. Oh. <laughs> it was a top, top thinking, no? Top thinking, oh. how can you say it in English? It was a, uh, the, 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 um... Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought yesterday, I need to find some, I, something interesting to say so the people can remember it, no? So, do you have some other question? Sibeli yeah. had no other frage. Yeah, Atu, I have a question. Um, I can see that you relate very much to your images. How does it feel like if you sell your image? Because I'm making photographs and I could not imagine that the piece which I'm making, that I sell it and I don't have it anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, when I was in the art school, a teacher said to me that our paintings are like children. 
Yeah. So comes the times when you nourish them, you give us all the care you can, and there comes the times when they need to find their own place in life. I Mm -hmm. And that's just the way I feel about my paintings. No, I'm mm -hmm. really happy when someone else has my painting. And mm -hmm. now in my business model, I'm, I'm having always copies of my paintings, uh, so, uh, prints. So mm -hmm. I can sell many of them now. No? And uh, sometimes it's not the original, sometimes it's the copy, but it's also this feeling of letting go. Of letting go, okay. Yes. Um, some other question. Yeah, I have a question. How do you decide uh, to uh, to work on what, what piece when you come in the, in the morning mm -hmm. in your atelier? You have so many uh, paintings uh, <laughs> that are, are in pro process. This is a big problem. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> dealing with it. Well, I would say I am I'm working on series. No, so in my in my, in my head is which series I will prioritize, and I'm working on this series and I'm working on some other pieces. Now I'm working on this new series, but I'm finishing the other series that I'm doing. So at the end, I will have a lot of work on different series, and I can uh, I can ask for exhibitions, no? because right. I cannot ask for an exhibition with just one series. I, have, I need to ask in one exhibition here with this series, and the other, the other place with the other series, and the other place with the other series. That is how I think, uh, okay. because I don't want to, to present the same group of paintings to many places at the same time. But uh, uh, I have a no, still an exhibition of about Amazon that I, I prepare in it no? and I'm not showing it. And the other things are for sale or for exhibition. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good. So is some other question or oh, we can finish today. Yeah, there is one more question, Ariane. Um, you told you you lived in the jungle wood and then you shifted to black forest wood. Mm -hmm. so this is a really big difference and I would like to ask you which is the biggest difference for you and can you find even a similarity? Well, I would start with the similarities. It's really nice to be in the, in the forest and you can hear the noises and the smell and the green and the feeling of belonging to nature. That's, that's the similarities. And the difference is that the Amazonas uh, forest is uh, flooded. No? That means it's water. Uh, most of the year is full with water. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you can sail in the top of the trees because the water go up eight meters, 10 meters. And that's the big difference because this is more like mountain forest. So that's the, the big difference. And of course, Amazonas, and as Vladimir can say, because he's also from the region, uh, Amazonas had a lot of biodiversity and a lot of animals. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we have here, but not so much mm -hmm. as in Amazonas. Yeah, at least when I lived. Okay, so I think I'm already. Yeah, online. ich glaube auch. Ich glaube auch. Mm -hmm. wir, wir, wir machen jetzt den Übergang, die fließende Übergang für die nächste. Mm -hmm. Ich bedanke mich, Arturo, für die danke, super danke. schöne Präsentation. Ist immer ein, eine, eine Freude, dich zu hören. Wir <lacht> <lacht> <Ja>, vermissen dich. <lacht> und, und, und deine Farbe, äh, Gabung auch, ne? das ist schön zu sehen. Und jetzt äh, machen wir äh, die Übergang zu Mrs. Velvet Goldmine. Ooh.